Well, hello everybody. Welcome. We have people from all over the world here, and names and faces uh, that I recommend, uh, uh, recognize, I should say, and I'd recommend. Um, but it's wonderful to see so many people here from uh, from all over the world. My name is Nick Kindler, and I run Kindler and Company. Uh, and I want to welcome you all. I, I'm thrilled to have so many people here uh, from all over. Uh, now, wh why are we here? Well, fundamentally, my organization, Kindler & Company, I'm the CEO and founder of Kindler & Company. We help innovators from around the world become better communicators because we believe that it's not money that makes the world go around. Yes, it's very important, uh, but it is communication. Uh, communication allows us to connect and engage with our audiences, our stakeholders, our consumers, our customers, and people in our community that can help us move our ideas forward. Um, so I'm thrilled today to actually be a guest at my good friend Abu Dakuri's office and we're using his technology. And I'm gonna take a moment and just introduce Ab and allow him to introduce himself. So please welcome the host of the actual webinar here, uh, Ab Udakuri. There we go. Hey everyone. Uh, before we go, I just wanna do a quick sound check. Can everyone see me? Can everyone hear us? Awesome, it should be smooth, it should be fluid. Um, my name is Av. Um, I've been a futurist. I have invented all sorts of ideas and technologies. And for the last five to six years, my passion before COVID is understanding how transformation is happening in the way we communicate. How do we host webinars? How are we going to facilitate hybrid and remote work? And suddenly COVID happens and it's amazing. My 10 year strategy became a year. And what today we're really focused on is how do you use technology to make meetings memorable? And this is something a lot of people have not understood. So I hopefully I'm gonna give you the best practices as to how to go make that happen. So I'm gonna give it back to Nick right now and we will go ahead and start the formal portion of the conversation. Wonderful, thank you, Av. So um, we are using Reactive Suite today. Today we're gonna look at a number of different uh, key uh, elements that, or principles, I should say, that help you present and perform and connect with your audience. And we're really looking at, uh, at performance today. This is the, the, whole, uh, the whole focus and the mindset that we can embrace what to become a better presenter, a better communicator. Um, a few things, some rules of engagement, if you will. Uh, and I, you know, write about these in my book, and I write about, I share these in all of my workshops and programs. Um, and and this is really important because we have people from all over the world. It's a tremendous opportunity to connect. And what I want you to do is follow these rules. Number one, I want you to unmute. Even if there's music in the background, or a baby crying, or a dog barking, I want you to, that's my way of writing bark, I want you to, uh, I want you to try and unmute and show us your faces. Please don't be shy. Let's see, I can see Mason, I can see Richard, I see Cynthia. Thomas, thank you for opening up and letting us see your world. Mm -hmm. It allows us to connect on a, on, in a way that we would if we were actually in a workshop together. So, so Nick, that's interesting because everyone says, please mute yourself. Please shut your cameras off. Are you saying that that's the opposite of what you should I, be doing? I want to see you. I want to see you. I can see all of you and I want to see you. Cynthia, it's terrific to see your, your face and your, now your smile. And, and same with you, Sue. I see the smile and, I, and every time I see a smile, it makes me smile. So thank you. So the second thing is I want there to be no bystanders. I want you to feel free to share your ideas and your thoughts. And if you have a friend or a colleague that is on there with you, then encourage them because you might know something that they know because they've shared it with you and you want to encourage them. So use the chat to encourage the people along. And that also brings me to the next rule, share. We're gonna ask you to, to put up some ideas on the chat and, and those kinds of things. In fact, um, where is everybody from? Let's do the first sharing right now. Where is everybody from? Where and where is my... Well, on that, you, me and Nick are here from Toronto. <laughs> yes, perfect. So, yeah, we're, type it into the chat. And, and, uh, yeah, let me click on the, yeah, chat, there, click on the chat. 
Perfect. And let's move that over to, oops, perfect. Perfect. sorry, I should have done this earlier. Perfect. Thank you, no, London, London, Brazil, Brazil Brampton. Amazing. There Brampton. Uh, from Markham, we have Burlington, we have Atlanta, Connecticut. We So we're national and international. Dayton, fantastic. Uh, Belfast, uh, wonderful. And we've got people from the UK, wonderful. So Sharon, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to do more sharing. And even Mississauga, St. John's, fantastic. I want you, when we ask you questions today, when we, we ask you to share your ideas, be bold. I started by saying that ideas... Uh, are really, you know, I started by saying it's important to share your content, to share your ideas. Please don't be shy, be bold. And um, here's the thing, because we're virtual, we all have these phones. I'm not holding mine, mine is off, it's over there. But I call them weapons of mass distraction. Uh, you're, I want you to try and turn all reminders and beeps and dings and dongs off so that we can spend this quality time together Av and I have prepared uh, some really great content to share with you, and uh, we want to take advantage of our time together. So, so please focus, turn off your, uh, your reminders. This is an odd one. It's a learning session, but I've got the idea of unlearning here. What I mean is we all come to the table with preconceived notions of how to present, how to communicate, how to run a virtual meeting even. I want you to park those ideas, even put it by the, the metaphoric windowsill. You can go back and pick it up later, but I really do want you to try and create space in your mind for some new ideas and uh, embrace those and, and keep them in there as well. Um, I want you to have fun. You can see that we're already having fun and I love doing this. Ab loves this. This is the highlight of our, of our month every time we've done this. Absolutely. Um, and so we just love doing this and I want you to have some fun as well. All right, uh, if you can't stay for the whole time, we're gonna drop in a link if you wanna be able to connect and learn about some of this um, uh, for, and book a strategy session with me. And we're also gonna book a, a, drop a link with, for Av a little bit later. But if you're interested in learning more and you can't stay, uh, just book a time. Uh, I think, uh, Jerry, if you can drop that link into the chat so people can have it uh, as we move forward. So, um, I have a question for all of you. And thank you for all of you for putting your cameras on, your, your unmuting yourself. Um, I had the privilege of reaching out to all of my clients early days of COVID. I had an idea. I wanted to know what their problems were, what were their challenges. And uh, they came back to me with a whole slew of different content, different messages. Um, what do you, but I was able to package them up. Does anyone have any guess on what the top three problems leaders are facing uh, globally? Globally. What are the top three problems? Drop it into the chat or shout so, it out. So just to phrase this, problems related to? Communication. To thank communication. You. Communication, Got it. yeah. Problems, thank you very much. <laughs> Not just problems. Yeah, I, I wish I was, I, yes. Yeah, but actually, a lot of these problems stem from communication, as right. we all know. Anyways, what are the problems that you think might be? Engagement, right. excellent. Keeping clients and colleagues engaged. So we've got two people talking about engagement. I don't know about you. My biggest problem is, is no matter how much I've learned about communication, my wife tells me how poor a communicator I am. So I don't know <laughs> if you can solve that. I'm not going to solve that today, <laughs> Ab. Retention, en retention, engagement, productivity, Zoom fatigue. Ah, Zoom Excellent. fatigue. And you know what's interesting is as I look at this list, fatigue, 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 distraction, it all stems from actually three things that came up and, and they all... These are all um, symptoms of each one of these. Uh, I'm going to just share with you, yes, being online, Zoom system failures. Here they are. Time. Well, you're fatigued when you run out of time. And the problem with many leaders is that they just don't have the time to sit and think. Uh, how many of you get a chance and, uh, to sit and really just contemplate what you want to achieve every day or at the beginning of the week or at the end of the week? How many of you, let's just show a row of, yeah, just, uh, yeah, okay, well then, good, Marlene, I'm ter it's great that you get to do that, but you might be one of the only people that I see with their hand up. I just started, started this week. week. Oh, <laughs> so it's a new habit, I love new it. Habit. Let's new talk. Habit. Let's talk in 28 d days and see if you keep having that habit. Keep going, Marlene. Right, the, right. the second, the second is clarity. Clarity. If we don't have time to sit and think, we can't get our message down. 
we can't get our content clear um, so that people can understand what we need. And that leads to a leadership deficiency. By the way, I'm not saying that all leaders uh, ha are deficient and bad leaders if they don't have time and clarity, but what it does is we must be seen and we must be heard as leaders, but most importantly, we must be understood. And there's a scary statistic that I share in a lot of my programs, which is that 46% of employees rarely leave a meeting knowing what to do next. So if they don't understand what it is that is expected, if our clients don't, if our stakeholders don't, we have a real problem in leadership. So I, I want to dive into performance, but I want to share the three core principles uh, that I've written out in my book, Impact. And I want to share these with you because performance is a big one of them. And, and I want you to understand why we're focused on this today. The first of the three core principles is simplify. If we've got content that we need to share, we need to use structure and process to simplify it. Now, Av, you and I were chatting about this. Yeah, so I did a lot of uh, research on the neuroscience of cognitive learning. Actually, about last month, I had this uh, amazing webinar with Dr. Noel Amelados, who's a behavioral psychiatrist and also a clinic cognitive scientist. And he talked about the concept of chunking. Too many people give too much information. And what he said was, three pieces of information, maybe four, maximum five. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I, I, I'm a big believer in the rule of threes. And in fact, um, I often say, and I did already, which is you use structure. And chunking is one way of structuring out your messaging. Um, and in other webinars, we talk about the communication canvas and how we can use that to break down. And we do use Interesting. the rule of three. I often tell people to avoid four and five messages. Um, so. Simplify. That's the first uh, message, uh, the first principle. The second is transform. Now, this is a fancy word, or a $20 word, for storytelling and language. So once you've elevated your structure and you've simplified it, you use storytelling to engage your audience in a different level. And there's all kinds of things at a different level. And there's all kinds of ways we can do that. Um, the third principle, which is why we're here today, is perform. And it's a mindset of performance. Now, we're going to focus on this in great detail in just a moment, but I want to talk about what happens if you combine all three of these things. The first is we create access to content. So we open doors to information that was previously uh, uh, closed, uh, information that we didn't know about, that didn't even think we could learn about, is accessible. That's why TED Talks are so successful. The other impact is understanding and we can understand or we can create a deeper level of understanding with the listener once we've transformed that messaging and then finally if we perform if we actually create a embrace a performance mindset use performance techniques we can create what we all want is a connection and in the center in the center it's what we are all striving for impact Results, outcomes. And, and you know what? That impact is no Zoom fatigue. That impact is engagement. That impact is clarity to me. And all of that comes back with the communication, for sure. So let's focus on this principle today. Uh, and we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at mindset. We're going to look at status. And we're going to look at how we set ourselves up to be successful once we've put these two things in place. And uh, the reality is how you look and sound can account to up to 65% of what the audience, of the message the audience receives. Which means you can spend all the time in the world thinking about your story and thinking about your structure, and it's important you do that, but you can't forget about how to set yourself up as a performer. Because every time, every time you present, every time we're on a Zoom call, right now, even though you're passive, and you're listening and you're watching, you're making an impression by, uh, on, with others, on others that are, are watching too. Have, has anyone done this? You jump, uh, you jump on a webinar like this and, <laughs> and uh, you're like, well, who's here? Do I know anybody? Or who might I want to meet? And then you look around and you see them on Zoom. And you, Has anyone done a little bit of window shopping that way? Let's see a show of hands. Come on, be honest. Yeah, of course. We all are making an impression. So 
The first thing is the mindset. And I want to share with you uh, a metaphor that I like to, to use. And again, I write about this in my book. This, this is how we think about presentations. People are judging us. People are thinking we don't know what we're talking about. People are questioning our, our expertise. People are, are thinking we, we're not really great at communicating or whatever it is. We have all kinds of questions around uh, and insecurities being judged. So let's get rid of this. No more judge. Let's move on to the pilot. And the pilot is a mindset. So moving away from being judged to being a pilot mindset. And let me talk to, to just share what I mean by a pilot. A pilot knows exactly what they're doing. They, they, turn, they know how to control the aircraft. They know how to maneuver it, turn it on, move it down the, the runway, take off, and successfully land. When you're sitting in row 8B, you're not sitting there going, huh, I wonder if this pilot really knows how to fly a plane. Never. You're, so it's, you're it's, telling me you're never judging the pilot? <laughs> only in rocky weather, only in bad weather. But, but the reality is you, uh, we don't do that. And so why are we expecting everybody to be judging us, or, or often we feel this way, when we're presenting? So we need to move away from this judgment. Get rid of it and embrace the pilot because you have you are taking your audience, your your uh, clients, your stakeholders on a learning journey, and you have every right to do so, and you have the power to take them on that journey every single time, and it's a privilege. Every time I get to do this, it's a privilege for me to fly or take you on a journey along with that. So I have some interesting thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so jump ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what's interesting about this is a lot of people ask me, then how do you convert that from a judge to a pilot? Um, and actually, what happens is from a cognitive learning point of view, there's something called situational awareness, which is really, really critical. And that situational awareness, as a, as a good friend of me talked recently, pilots learn, if you're a pilot, everything is about situational awareness. So number one, Understand that meetings have a high cognitive workload. You might think you're presenting, but there's a lot of anxiety. There's a high cognitive workload that you're going through. Yeah. The question is, is how do you expand your comfort zone such that you can do more simultaneously? But there's a whole bunch of tricks for that. And one of the first things that you have to understand is it's your responsibility as a presenter to go make sure that everybody has a safe trip. And that requires a whole bunch of things. That, that's one of the reasons we asked you to turn your cameras on. Because when you turn your cameras on, we get to see you, you get to see me. It becomes really important that I'm not just talking to a screen and you're not just talking to a, or listening to a deck. That's really cr improve your peak performance. So the other thing that I actually think is really critical is it's my job as a presenter, Nick's job as a presenter, to go ahead and help you as an audience focus. So our marketing departments, all of us work with companies, we get all these decks and we spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in time creating these beautiful decks mm -hmm. to go find out none of us are actually performing. We don't know how to pilot the plane, right? <laughs> and that's something that most of us actually don't realize. So now, one of the things, simple things about making an audience focus, you know how important it is to be able to use body language and point? We do that in a boardroom. We don't do that in a virtual meeting when we shut all of our things off. By the way, I have an issue with this. Let's move that over here. Instantly, you help your audience focus, right? Absolutely. And by the way, Barbara, we are working on captions, and that is some of the type of technology that we want to add in. That's a great type of roadmap features. Um, diagram and ink and markup. The ability to underline and bring situational awareness. If you're coming in and saying there's a problem with this, we're solving it like this, it creates an enormous amount of clarity and you as a pilot are actually taking your audience to the next stage. And I can't change, I can't tell you how important the concept of narrative is and this is the problem that most people have. You all know the power of the narrative, but none of us as professionals have ever been taught how to transform our meetings into a narrative. And there's an entire art to it. And the, one of the best things from a, 
from a behavioral cognitive learning is to understand chunking. There's three pieces of information. And if anybody wants to volunteer, I'm going to actually ask you a quick thing. Tell me the top three pieces of information that you want to get your client across in any meeting. Just type it in. Just go comma, 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 right? What are three top things that you want them to get away from, right? So what we want to do is I want to show you how easy it is in order for you to go ahead and value cost and timeline. Absolutely. So articulate the value very quickly, the problem I solve, who I solve it for, and how I solve it. Absolutely. So what's interesting is, is when you look at this, the problem I solve is we are going to make this cheaper for you by doing this that's different than anybody else, and this is what I want to go ahead and do. Lots of companies and decks and presentations do not know how to go ahead and create this chunking that allows you for working memory. They don't have the tools to go ahead and make that happen. Absolutely. So coming in, I want you to talk about status now. Awesome. All right. So um, let's, um, let, let's talk about, you know, we've chunked it out. We've embraced this mindset around creating uh, that we have the right and the privilege to be able to connect with an audience. Now, uh, unfortunately, especially in this virtual environment, this thing, status, is affected. And I, I have a question. What does status mean to you? When you see the word, uh, drop it into the chat. Let me just see what, what it means to you. What does status mean to you? Drop it in, in a, in a sentence, two or three sentences, two or three words, whatever it means. Let's take a look here. What does status, what does the word status mean to you? Not, let's just give it a moment, see what, it, position on a pyramid, Tim, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Power and authority, respect earned. Cache based on experience and knowledge. I love that, thanks Marlene. The state of things, very different. Credibility, Terry, thank you. These are great, and, and, and you know, you notice I said, tell me what it means to you. Because uh, it means something different uh, to everybody, including Barbara, who's saying, where are we at with the project, right? That's the status. What's the status update? Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> I, I think Barbara is a project manager, program exactly. manager. There we my, go. My wife is a, a, runs project management, and <laughs> yes, that's exactly what she would say in terms of status. But she also knows what I do, and so she knows what, in this context, I'm talking about how we hold ourselves. Now, okay. this idea of status, by the way, is something that I learned not in science and neuroscience, but when I did theater school, way, way back. I was in uh, theater, and then we also did uh, improv at Second City when I did a number of courses, and I used to perform there. Now, status was this exercise that we did, would do physically to change how we hold ourselves. And in fact, if you've ever watched TV or a movie or a show or go on to watch theater, you'll see the lower status characters make themselves smaller. And higher status characters hold themselves in a different way. And what I've done is I've created a, a scale, right? As you go along the scale, it actually increases your status. And I'd like everyone to just try for a moment. Think about low status. Low status means you're actually lower to the ground. It means that you're asymmetrical. You might be closed. There's certainly no eye contact. And you're definitely not smiling. So from a physical perspective, I'd love to see everybody that's got their cameras on. Do me a favor. Show me as low status, even with your head and shoulders, as you can right now. On the count of three, one, two, three. Low status. Love it. Oh, Laura, you're doing something that's so... Oh, Thomas, keep, hold it, guys. Hold it. Hold it. Well done. Okay, and shake it out, because it's not fun being low status for a long time. Okay, now, this one's actually even more awkward, I find, because although I like being somewhat high status, I don't want to be the highest status. So let's try and do a quick Zoom chat with ev call with everybody being as high status as possible. Show me the highest status. You can stand up if you want. That's right, I can see lots of people shifting onto the edge of their chair. Mika, look at that. Some serious power stance happening. Lois is looking like a pro. Lyndon, <laughs> look at, and I'm making him smile, which is always a challenge to do. Well done, nicely done. Look at the power. Okay, now shake it off, shake it off. The status that we hold ourselves at, unfortunately, on Zoom calls especially, and you can look around now, look at where your camera is at. It's likely encouraging you to look down, which immediately 
forces your status down. So if you're ever about to make a presentation, go on, on camera, do anything, and you've got your phone in your hand, look at what happens to my status. And now I'm going on stage. I, I go in, on stage, I have to see and feel the, the effect of higher status on myself because it will have an impact on how the audience perceives me. And the question really is, how do you want to show up? How do you want to show up? Because status is just one way of enhancing your executive presence. I'm going to pass it over to Av. Okay, so it's interesting that he talked about executive presence. And actually, most of the cognitive sciences over there uh, tell you that in a meeting, it's actually only 7% your content, your deck, your presentation, your entire marketing department and all the stuff that you put together. Because a lot of you guys work for big multinationals and I've seen your decks, hundreds of pages long, lots of information. 7% at most is the actual impact. So nonverbal communication, your voice, your status is that other 93%. So what's interesting is about how we present in these webinars. Here's the thing. When we all go on first dates, do we talk to a PowerPoint presentation, or would you like to talk to the date? <laughs> that, that's a comedy sketch I'd love to see. I'd love to see that. That's hilarious. <laughs> we should do an Abbott and Costello, right? So when we go on a first sales call, yeah. how is it that we don't talk to people anymore, Nick? Like, we don't. You know, this is so funny. People want to talk to people. It's absolutely yeah. critical. And this is what I talk about the executive presence is, is we've forgotten in the Zoom culture that it's you and me and all of you individuals that's important. That's actually being lost now. Mm. What happens is the executive presence is focused on the deck. So, and that's really counterintuitive. And to me, if all of us are presentation professionals, and what I mean is I'm not saying yourselves, you present and you communicate for a living. We're all professionals that way, mm -hmm. right? So from that, the reason people hire us, promote us, the reason that they buy from us, why? It's trust. Trust is the biggest fundamental impact to any one of these type of presentations. Mm -hmm. And what I find these days is in Zoom meetings, that trust becomes almost zero. We barely see yeah. people, we barely understand what it is that, that they want to go ahead and get a message across. And there's a lot of issues with that. So, Take a look at your normal Zoom meetings presentation window. <laughs> What's funny is our today's video conference tools actually do everything to do the wrong cognitive learning. From all the best practices of cognitive learning, they actually tell you not to do that. First step, they make your video tiny. Remember, you're 93% of the effect of the presentation. Here, you're not even 7% of the screen size. Then they take a huge amount of useless information and they blow that out. So they're basically telling you that you are not important, your deck is important. Then they tell you to mute yourself so that you don't cause any distractions. Then they tell you to turn your cameras off, right? So I find it astounding as to how video conference calls have evolved to actually go against all sorts of cognitive learning models and, and any source of neuroscience related to the power of impact of presentations. But what you want to do is understand you are as important as your content. You got to be able to understand and teach people that you are an expert and you can have a conversation. I can be situationally aware. I can direct your attention wherever I want. And these are the fundamentals of any type of presentation technique that's going to go ahead and have impact, right? So, uh, Nick? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I, I would say that we often use our, our, our visuals as a crutch, especially in, verb, in, in virtual environment. And we have to be able to know the message uh, and, and, yes, chunk it out using structure and simplifying it so that we can engage in a way that makes us authoritative in our content. Now, um, the last kind of section of this mindset of performance webinar is, is really all about setup. Um, we've talked about uh, embracing a mindset. We've talked a little bit about how we hold ourselves and, and, and use of visuals and how that can impact our status. 
But what does your space say about you? This is my home office, by the way. No, it's not. I wish it was. I, I found this on uh, on Google, and I just was like, that would be pretty great. But I think there would be some serious HVAC can, issues in terms of making everything work. But I, I do think that we, we need to think about how we hold ourselves and how we position ourselves and what people see. Um, a couple of thoughts. You know, I, the reason I love to see everybody's space is, you know, I love to see, you know, um, that people have artwork, Lois. I like to see that sometimes people's guitars are behind them or their musical instruments. And and yes, in in uh, in that may, helps me, yeah, make a connection with my uh, with my members of my audience as I would normally in a in a real audience, but. As I said, we are often focused downward at the camera. So I'm just gonna, and this is very late in the COVID game to share this, but I wanna reiterate this because I still see it day in and day out. So even if you don't have the funds to create a, a, a nicer home studio, which by the way, does not cost a lot of money. It's only a few hundred dollars to get the lighting and stands and things you need. But if you don't, here are some quick hacks. And this is from, Tom Ford, who published it in the New York Times about five days into COVID. It was how to look great on camera. Here it is. Make sure that you are eye level or head level with your camera and elevate your computer and your camera. Pretty straightforward, I know, but some people still aren't doing it. And I want you to know that you all have these coffee table books that you can use to elevate Actually, your camera. And I, would, I love this. I'm I'd love to see people elevate their camera right now. They are. They are. <laughs> okay. And let's see the before and after. Yeah. Terry, awesome. Like you can even see the difference, right? From a power stance, uh, you're looking more on it. Yeah. So so this is very this is great. This is not about shaming people. It's about awareness. I really want you to know that this changes how people say use them. Yes. Use textbooks. It's about time I put the good use. <laughs> nice, Laura. And uh, Terry, uh, Janet says uh, that it looks way better. So uh, find a way to keep it elevated. The second thing, and this is a nice little trick, if you don't have, if you haven't invested in a ring light, which by the way, I got rid of mine because I find it, I've got these things called glasses and I can't, unless I change a very expensive, to a very expensive lens, it reflects. So I actually changed it differently, but this is a very simple way. Put it behind your computer. Put it behind it, just a desk lamp. It allows you to do it. I, I'm loving that Terry is now very focused on changing his setup. <laughs> There's Savannah with- Backlighting, light. we, got, we got backlighting. The concept of backlighting in a, in a studio, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So the next thing, this is kind of cool. You know, we've all seen those um, productions as the you're reflectors. going down the street, you see someone with a reflector, right? The big shiny thing. That's to help uplight the person who's going to be on camera, the actor or the principal. So all you need to do is get a little piece of paper and it will uplight and get rid of any of those kind of, there you go, Lois. I know, I think I shared this with you once before. <laughs> and it gives you a little bit of a, a uh, uplight action as well. So that is um, a really simple trick. But here's the last thing. And, and this is really important. It's, it's positioning how you're seen on camera. And there's a, a general rule of, it's called the two thirds rule in a video, um, which means you're going to use just two thirds, whoops, let me try that again. Uh, just two thirds of the space. Uh, you're gonna use just two thirds of, of the space. I can do it, I know I can, I just can't trace. I didn't pass tracing. Um, uh, you, you're gonna use two thirds of the space to create a really nice composition for people to see you. Now, that all being said, if there's any way for you to set yourself up so you can stand when you're presenting, please do it. It adds energy, it adds enthusiasm, it adds body language, all of the things some of the things that we've talked about, and we talk about this a lot more. In, in I think videos. there's a word you love, gravitas. Gravitas. <laughs> gravitas. There I you do. go. I do love it. Okay. Um, back to you, Av. Thanks, sure. everybody. So what's interesting is now he's talking about the fundamentals of what you can do right there at home. I want to talk to you about the art of the possible with technology. So first up, I'm not here to sell you hardware. We don't sell anything. We don't sell software. We actually are really here as an organization to empower people. And one of the cool things I love about the setup that I have, and you can buy this off the shelf, uh, uh, and 
these interactive whiteboards, they're just a big touch screen, especially in an office space where you're constantly um, uh, presenting and constantly sharing. The reason I'm doing this is I'm actually going to show you something as to my setup. I actually love being able to stand and being able to write. And now, not only that, what I call is I call this the studio environment. And I'm going to show you what I have. And one of the big things that I actually find to be distracting is virtual backgrounds. People go to town and do all sorts of virtual backgrounds. People, uh, you know, I hate them. You know how jarring them. it is? You know, you suddenly see your arm come in and come out, and I can see a halo around you, and through the halo, I can see your kitchen anyway. Like, I mean, but, and even even that, even if you have a green screen, it doesn't it doesn't make it great. It's yeah, it's just. But you know what? We're all people, right? Yeah. Like we, we know our limitations. I'm not in a professional studio, and the funny thing is, is uh, there's been lots of conversations, and I never have the time to go ahead and clean up my office or whatnot. And I'm going to actually show you my presentation <laughs> setup. So what we have here is really, I, we have an audience monitor. So this is just an off the shelf monitor that we bought where we can see every one of you. I have a camera pointing at me. We've got some lights off of Amazon, which are, I don't know, 50, 60, maybe a hundred bucks. Not even, yeah. And yeah. I have a separate camera. And again, this is an off the shelf, like a Logitech camera and whatnot. And I think this tri tri tripod yeah. was like 35 bucks off of Amazon. So what you're seeing here is me taking my laptop and connecting it up to a nice TV and standing in front. But at the same time, you can do all of this at your desk. Get, like I can actually show you on my desk here, I have a similar setup, and again, mind the mess, but I have a laptop, <laughs> I have my Zoom call right there, I got a ring light. So again, we don't sell hardware, but if you want, I can recommend from you, from Amazon, what you can go ahead and buy and me and Nick can easily show you what works for us. And we have a lot of partners that can easily facilitate solutions, but it doesn't have to be that much. So on my desk, I don't know if a lot of people realize, but Zoom and Teams allows you to take your audience and put it on a second monitor. See, what happens in Zoom is they make you a tiny postage stamp on the bottom right-hand corner. And that's not how you want to go ahead and be seen. There's an enormous amount of impact that you have, and you have to be aware of that. So just understand, there's a lot of off-the-shelf tools that you can easily use. Awesome. Uh, we are uh, we are getting near the end uh, of, uh, well, this is actually the end of our formal presentation. But what I'd like to do is get questions. And well, see. we have a lot on the chat. We should go through yeah. the chat and see what we missed. Absolutely. Um, we, we have a question from Steve right off the top there. Hi, Steve. Um, uh, any questions on audio? And Steve, if you don't mind jumping, speaking of audio, jumping off mute, just clarifying what you mean by any thoughts on audio. Hi, Nick. I, I put hey, myself on mute here. I'm in my yeah. kitchen. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I find, find actually a lot of people uh, on, on Zoom, Zoom, especially some sensing, uh, uh, have uh, really terrible, terrible audio. audio. Like, like right, right now, now in my kitchen, kitchen it's very, very, very echoey. Right? Right? So, right? so if you're here in an echoey room, room and you're talking, um, up in my office, I have a I set up with a proper microphone and whatnot, and I find that the good quality audio makes a difference, like audiences react to that. Yes. Uh, the poor quality audio can just be exhausting to listen to. And, and I sometimes just shut off webinars and presentations and things if the audio is really bad, because it's just too hard to listen. Yeah. Um, so, so um, you know, definitely uh, there's some notes here. Uh, first of all, your sound isn't terrible right now, Steve, just to be honest, I could make out everything you're saying. But I understand that if I was presenting and it was echoey for a half an hour, that would be very distracting. So I'll tell you, um, I use, uh, first and foremost, when I'm delivering a presentation, I always am in my presentation space. I always set, I'm always i set up in my own presentation space, and I use a Blue Yeti micro, microphone, uh, which has great sound. Uh, but if I'm ever stuck, uh, because stuff happens, I do have um, the AirPods Pro, which are excellent in terms of noise cancellation and noise isolation um, in terms of the microphone picking up the sound. So those are my two go-tos. Uh, do you have thoughts on uh, audio? You know, I found that over the last uh, couple of years, um, just a lot of my off-the-shelf cameras and whatnot have done an amazing job. Uh, 
I know that uh, it's funny. I went back to a camera from about three years ago because my kids needed something for school. And I was horrified as to how bad it was. But I think that with COVID and everything, mm. I'm finding that those type of problems, like if you invest into a good camera right off of uh, Amazon these days, that's brand or, yeah. on the newer side, um, like all of this stuff, we didn't do anything. Like how's the audio today on the webinar? Yeah, that's a good question. How, how is the audio? Is it, is it, is it quality? Clear? Is it it's echoey? Is it tinny? What's, what's your thoughts? And truthfully, we'd like to know. I think it's oh, good. good. Yeah, okay. so I'm, this particular camera I bought off of Amazon, it's called Inex uh, 470. It's got good reviews and, and actually all of us are, me, Nick, are continuing to just use this camera. I have no special microphone set up in this room at all. And uh, that was one of the things. I wanted to make sure that this tech was approachable. Okay, so I'm just, um, you know, Jerry, I, I wonder if it's possible if you can, because it's hard for me to just quickly see where all of the questions went. Um, uh, Steve is saying I would recommend a lav mic for your setup now. So awesome. there's a way to, yeah, which yeah. I would agree. We could definitely improve on that for sure. Um, uh, any other questions uh, that people have about any of the content that we've shared so far? So uh, Mika has asked, what tech are you using to compose the video and deck? Okay, so yeah. that's actually called Reactive Suite. Do you want to come in? Yeah. Come through that? yeah. Uh, Mika, thank you for that. Uh, what it is, is this is a piece of software, and it's $30 in order to go ahead and get this. Um, it's called Reactive Suite, and what it does is it allows you to have conversations. It allows you to ink, present, and this was built on the foundations of neuroscience, where we basically are taking all the behavioral and cognitive learning models and creating a software that reinforces the learning. So if any, and one of the things that I'm actually doing into January is me and Nick are going to give you, see, there's too much here to unpack from a performance <laughs> presentation. What do you do? One of the conversations we want to have with everyone next year is we want to take your presentations, your existing presentations and reactivize them. I will show you how I can take your marketing content and quickly transform it using the principles of not only performance, but also of neuroscience. And I can teach your teams, and again, we're not charging or anything for that. I would love for people to actually sign up, and we will show you live how we can, how we can generate this if you're interested. So watch out for, for our LinkedIn, like subscribe to me on LinkedIn, because I'm putting up a lot of content on something like this. Uh, I, absolutely, sorry, this is $30 US uh, per month uh, is the app. I, sorry about that, Sue, I uh, apologize. I didn't have a chance to finish my sentence. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so what I'm doing is, is I am leveraging that technology. Now, but the reality is, is, is if you're using something like what me and Nick do present professionally, like I don't think that there's a, an alternative to standing up. Like some of these whiteboards are, are relatively expensive. You can lease them. Again, we don't sell hardware. But what I found is, is they're phenomenal. Like I, I perform and present for a living and being able to stand in my home office or where not and do this and engage with 30, 40, 50 people at a time. Like, uh, you know, I think there's a lease cost. I think, what did you get for a lease cost for yours? 300 bucks? 300 bucks, yeah. 300 bucks yeah. or 400 bucks a month. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was transformational for us. So uh, that's what the technology is. And what's... Awesome, yeah. A any other questions, uh, anything? Uh, anything about uh, questions, technology? Um, have you ever assisted in presenting a storyboard from Janet? Um, have you ever, Janet, do you mind going off mute and just uh, sharing your question with everybody and, and so I can sure. understand more? Can you hear me really well? well? Yes, perfect. Thanks, Janet. Okay, okay thank you. My, My uh, video, video is acting up for me, so I apologize for that. that. Um, and and thank, thank you for uh, offering your time, time to us. It's been very, very uh, um, Great, great information. information. So, uh, storyboards. storyboards. I'm, I'm writing, writing an animation, and I, I need to present. Now, now during, um, I've had, had a lot of people ask, ask you to do some and stuff, and I, I have not, not yet, yet um, facilitated this. this. And I'm wondering, wondering if can, either one of you have can ever I take that? experienced that. that. Yes, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Av, but is before I do, is Jason still on? Uh, is Jason, I thought I saw Jason Thompson here, but I don't know if he is. He's got a lot of experience in animation as well. I thought I saw him on there, but maybe he's not. If he is, I would highly recommend you connect via on the, in the chat. Now I'm gonna let uh, Ab sure. chat, chat connect. Sorry, uh, so what is, um, so storyboards. Now, one of the problems that we have with a lot of the type of meetings that we have is 
nonlinear communication. So I'm actually going to go show you something right now. So let's just say that we had a video. Okay. So I am now showing you an animation. And so I'm going to start playing this. At any point in time, I can pause. I can rip this scene out. And then let's actually have a conversation on what it is that we want to do here. Then I can continue playing. And as soon as someone says, go ahead and change this up right here, I can then rip that scene out. And we have the ability to go ahead and say, update that. And as we continue this conversation on this animation or video, I can actually rip out scene after a scene onto this nice little whiteboard and I can share this whole thing back as a PDF. Now, have I answered your question at all as to how I yeah, train actually, people to do it? That's, that's actually, actually perfect. perfect. I, I, I just, I just had a whole, whole list, list of ideas, ideas in my head just come up just on that little brief uh, demonstration. demonstration. Thank you for that. No, absolutely. And I can, so the cool thing about the way that we wanted to leverage ideas was, see, a lot of technology has limitations. It has limitations on how you can share, how you can connect. But the idea that when I wanted to create this piece of software was, here's a slide. I want you to take this message and put it in over here. Let's move that over there. So I would yeah. love for you to reach out and I can show you again. Um, uh, and we can actually take your content and some of your presentations. And I'd, you know, I'd love to run through with it live because you know, we've done about four years worth of research into this particular application framework and webinar framework. And um, we're constantly learning from our customers because I think that this is the future of how things communicate. Uh, how, how can people reach out to you? Uh, yes, um, th that's, a, that's a good... <laughs> that was my next question, actually. <laughs> uh, so, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, exactly. It's top secret. It's, uh, it's on a need-to-know basis, and, uh, and uh, so far nobody has needed to know. <laughs> Uh, well, you can, you're a need need to know guy, guy now. now. <laughs> the, 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 there you go. So email me at vizetto.com, or the company is called Vizetto, vizetto.com. And if you register, you can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, Adam Timmons, did you join at all? Were you there before? Um, yeah, if, no, you can, I yeah. if, if you can uh, put your email up as well, and just put the link up to the Vizetto software. So what I usually do, is I love to train and onboard. What I can do is if you guys have interest, so next, in January, uh, me and Nick are gonna team up to actually dive into a specific, so for example, we're gonna take your presentations and decks and we're gonna show you what the art of the performance and, and the art of communication is going to be. Then I can take your teams and train them, and by the way, there's no cost or obligation. Like, uh, the software is 30 bucks, and if you don't like it, you can attend all the seminars, you never have to pay us, don't worry about it. <laughs> It's a it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty low ask. You only you only pay if you get value out of it, and you only pay what thirty bucks for us. So yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. But please ask us more questions. Yeah, any other questions about anything? Anything at all? Uh, any thoughts on applying your approach to software demo? I think you're going to get a lot of uh, demo uh, questions. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I'm going to yeah, absolutely yeah. So yeah, what one of the biggest problems that I actually have is. You know, when I started this development, one of the problems that I wanted to solve was, a lot of you, have you actually ever done demos with websites or demos with mobile apps? Maybe you have it, awesome, okay. So one of the cool things that I wanted to go ahead and do was how do you connect content in a manner that's meaningful? So here's an example. So let's just say that we have an app or a website or a piece of information we need to teach that's on our phone. How many of you have done this and say, hey, do you look at that? <laughs> so now the interesting thing is, is if I can come in and actually point out and write on my phone live, or I can point out and show you the concept of this as it's how it applies. By the way, there's a new version of the software and it has a new button over here, or you can underline over here. So these are all the type of cool things we want to be able to solve. So when I started researching communication, uh, I think it's Marshall McLuhan. Uh, yeah, the he me said, the media is the message, right? That's right, yeah. Okay, but here's the problem. How many types of media do we have in our message today? What would he say today? 
Okay, you're on a Zoom call, sharing yeah. your screen, uh, you're, you're on a Slack channel, you're showing a mobile app together with 14 different types of media simultaneously. Well, so what would Marshall I would, say? I would say, say the media is yes. the message and it's diluted. <laughs> it's diluted, right? Yeah. Well, it's confusion. Like, I mean, I think that what you're dealing with is you're dealing with mass confusion uh, and all of these devices yeah. have made our communication harder. So that's one of the cool things as what I look at the software and technology is can we create a table where every piece of information is put there for all of us to interact, write, and view? And that's our research, right? So if I can point at things and tell you that change this, but don't change that, um, is that engaging? And I would like to go ahead and, and explore these type of vibes. So my concept, and a lot of people go, Tony Stark, it's Iron Man, it's... CSI. That's how I explain it to my wife. <laughs> I got a friend who's Tony Stark. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is, is um, absolutely, I have been inspired by a lot of that type of stuff. And I look at that type of stuff and go, why is that not the art of the possible? Hold on. We have driverless cars that can potentially take us from here to Detroit. But we have PowerPoint presentations that give us Zoom hell. Like, how does that work, right? Yeah. Like you got billions of dollars into driverless cars, but we have no automation, no technology into meetings. Yeah. So that's been the purpose. And one of the key things that I wanted to do was, yeah, absolutely, reach out with influencers. We have a whole series of webinars, again, on neuroscience, learning, presentation models, cognitive learning models. How do you take these type of presentations and take it to the next level? So I'm hoping that those type of topics would resonate. Um, we have the last five minutes here. Any other questions? that we can dive in because we talked, we touched on a lot of high level topics. I would love your thoughts on what type of presentations you'd like to see from me and Nick and some of my network. What are the topics that would be interesting to you? Um, please throw it out into chat and uh, you know, we'll reach out and, uh, and connect. Hey, 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 about, about how to use, use it for software presentations. Maybe you can speak a little bit to that. I think that was what. Yeah, I think I was showing the software presentations as uh, as the app coming in or the websites coming in. So um, I think that uh, uh, if you wanted to reach out, I can dive into more of it. But but you can bring, basically bring in your app into Reactive, right? So if you are doing a demo of a backend database, or if you are doing a demo of a of a process or CAD. I can actually bring all sorts of content into Reactive and treat it as it's a piece of paper, which is, which is, uh, which is, I think, the message that I wanted to get across. Have you explored yeah, yeah. using? Uh, 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 can, can I make a comment? Yes, Jerry? please. Um, um, I, 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 I use software a bit, a bit and, and just, just to, to add, add to that. that. So, so what, what might not have been clear, clear is when you, when you open a window with, with software, software, it's, it's a, a live window, window of the software. software. Right, right on, the on the screen. screen. So, so what you're, what you're, you're gaining, gaining is, is you want to explain, explain the functionality, the functionality of, the of the software. You, you can draw, draw on a live demo, demo of the software. And, that, and that, that's the key thing. thing. I mean, you, you, you see a phone. phone. I mean, if you, you could sort, sort of navigate, navigate on your phone, phone right? right? Um, so so you're, you're, you're doing a software demonstration, but you point out particular areas, panels, features in the software itself. So you're kind of getting um, um, as if, if you're sitting, sitting in front of somebody, somebody and, and uh, you know, you, know, you, you get to point, point, point on the screen, screen and draw on the screen. The screen. So, so you know, you know, that, that sort of helps. helps. Yeah. Absolutely. So the ability to take your content and software live is absolutely, uh, absolutely key for, for the way we want you to present. See, what happens with a lot of presentations are a deck by definition is static. Okay? If it's static, you can only go in one direction. You can't have a conversation. But how many people here in a presentation would like to have a conversation in their meetings versus present? And that's yes. what it comes back down to, right? Yes. All of our technology and learnings, everything that we've been taught over and over again is present, 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 not have a conversation. So the last couple of minutes, what we are really trying to do is revolutionize that and turn it upside down and say, to have conversations, you have to meet people when you meet people, you've got to elevate your executive presence. When you elevate your executive presence, you've got to go into the narrative and chunk that out. And it's called reinforcement learning. When I visualize, I accentuate, I highlight, and you create engagement. So we're into 55 minutes, and I'd like to know, has, anybody, has everyone, show me a hand, uh, show of hands, have you been engaged for the last hour? 
And this level of engagement, would it help your businesses? And that's what we would love to, love to go ahead and explore. So reach out to us and uh, please give us topics on what you would like to learn about. And I will absolutely uh, go ahead and, uh, and uh, cater to webinars in the future on those type of topics. Yep, absolutely. Nick? Yeah. And, and uh, I think we might be uh, out of at the very end. Uh, thank you all for being here. I want to thank Av for hosting and Absolutely. letting me play with his awesome reactive suite. And uh, um, I want to thank everybody for taking the time. We know how busy you are. And, um, and on that, I just want to say, if you guys are in Toronto and you want to borrow this room for any presentation or webinar, feel free. You just have to bring donuts. That's what so I did. That, that's, that's what you have to do. Yeah. So it's available. You can play around with it, try it out. You can use it for any of your seminars. Uh, I, I want to finish by thanking everybody uh, for, again. Thank you, Av, uh, for hosting here, letting us use the Reactive Suite. If anybody is interested in meeting with Av, he's given his, uh, his email. email address. You can book a time with me if you'd like to learn more about the Impact Accelerator or any of my coaching programs or uh, enterprise programs that I provide to different organizations. And uh, again, you have lots of choices in the day. You chose to spend it with us. Thank you very much. And we really uh, appreciate your time. All the very best, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.